And then there is the plagiarized story of Moses. Upon Moses' birth, it is said that he was placed in a reed basket and set adrift in a river in order to avoid infanticide. He was later rescued by a daughter of royalty and raised by her as a prince. This baby in a basket story was lifted directly from the myth of Sargon of Akkad of around 2250 BC. Sargon was born, placed in a reed basket in order to avoid infanticide and set adrift in a river. He was in turn rescued and raised by a key, a royal midwife. Furthermore, Moses is known as the lawgiver, the giver of the Ten Commandments, the Mosaic Law. However, the idea of a law being passed from God to a prophet up on a mountain is also a very old motif. Moses is just another lawgiver in a long line of lawgivers in mythological history. In India, Manu was the great lawgiver. In Crete, Minos ascended Mount Dicta, where Zeus gave him the sacred laws. While in Egypt, there was Mises, who carried stone tablets and upon them the laws of God were written. Manu, Minos, Mises, Moses. And as far as the Ten Commandments, they are taken outright from spell 125 in the Egyptian Book of the Dead. What the Book of the Dead phrased, I have not stolen, became thou shalt not steal. I have not killed, became thou shalt not kill. I have not told lies, became thou shalt not bear false witness, and so forth. For the idea of a law being passed from God to a prophet up on a mountain is also a very old motif. Moses is just another lawgiver in a long line of lawgivers in mythological history. In India, Manu was the great lawgiver. In Crete, Minos ascended Mount Dicta, where Zeus gave him the sacred laws. While in Egypt, there was Mises, who carried stone tablets, and upon them the laws of God were written. Manu, Minos, Mises, Moses. But that's the beginning of their story. See, listen. If I want to, if I want to control you, understand how this goes. If I want to control you, right? All I have to do is write down some things in a book and convince you that what I wrote came from God. That God downloaded this into me as I was writing it, and He wants me to give this message to you, the world, okay, so He can be pleased with you. That's all I gotta do is convince you that what I wrote came from God, and I got you. And that's exactly what they did. All right, they wrote themselves into history and made themselves God's chosen people. Okay. This whole idea of Moses, where did that name even come from? Well, there was a great Egyptian pharaoh by the name of Menkepera Jehudi Mays. Again, Menkepera Jehudi Mays. Let me let me spell that out for you, so you see so so you see how this is, how it looks, right? Men is M E N, right, which means the son of. Men, right? Okay. Kepera. K H E P E R A. Men Kepera. Kepera means new beginning. All right. Or the son of the beginning of what? Okay. Jehudi Mays. Spelled D J E H U T Y M E S. Let me spell that for you again. Jehudi Mays, right? The D is almost silent there. Jehudi. D J E H U T Y M E S. Right? Now, this Pharaoh, Menkepera Jehudi Mays, was renamed by the Greeks. Instead of calling him by his African name, which I just gave it to you, they renamed him Thutmosis. And they spell that T-H-U-T-M-O-S-I-S -S, to be using English characters. And that's where we came, or well, they came up with the name Moses from. The last part of Thutmosis III. Yes, Thutmose III, his African name was Menkepera Dehudi Mays, 
but the Greeks call him Thutmosis the third. Okay, and it was from Moses, out of that Moses, that we have the name Moses, because there was no Moses, brothers and sisters. Okay, there was no Moses. Understand this, there was no Moses. All right, please understand that. What about the story of, of the drowning in the Red Sea? You know, uh, at, at the temple of, of, of um, Ursa Ma'atra, or Ramses, Ramses, the Temple of Ramses, uh, you'll see a, a drawing, or I should say a carving, really not a drawing, it's a carving in stone, okay, of uh, a drowning, a mass drowning taking place, right? Okay, and it was from this, this carving, this relief, actually a massive relief, okay, there at the Temple of, of Ramses, okay, you see this massive relief, of a drawing or depiction I should say of a drowning a mass drowning there well the Europeans went in and saw that and copied it okay and made it the story of God drowning Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea trying to chase the so called Jews or the Hebrews you understand this right those of you who've been to Kemet, you've seen what I'm talking about, right? But it wasn't that God drowned Pharaoh and his army, okay? The depiction is you see the Pharaoh on his chariot with the horse, okay, chasing the invaders, the Hyksos, okay, and them drowning in the Anoctus River, okay, or the Nile River, you see, okay? That's what this is about, brothers and sisters. They saw the, the, the mass drowning of the invaders. Pharaoh almost the first, okay, uh, driving the the, the uh, uh, Europeans, the invaders, out of Egypt and reclaiming the throne. That's what that is. That's the depiction there. But the Europeans twisted it and it shows a drowning. So they made it Pharaoh's army being drowned, okay, because they, come on. You know the whole story of of of, of, of the Ark of the Covenant of Co Ark. I can't even say it. The Ark of the Covenant. Okay, there was no Ark of the Covenant, brothers and sisters. They the original Ark is the Ark of Ra, not not the Ark of the Covenant. Okay, but they stole the idea of the Ark of Ra, which is is. Oh, I wish I could show you the picture right now. I'm come when I when I get square away to technical difficulties, you can see it for yourself. The Ark of Ra is right there in the Temple of Heru. Okay, in in Edfu, Africa. Yeah, the story of the Ark. Okay, that the ancient Africans carried before their armies and won their battles and they stole that and put it in the Bible and said as long as they carried the Ark of Ra, the armies of Israel were victorious. There was no army of Israel, brothers and sisters. The whole thing is a lie. They plagiarized our story. Our story. Okay, yeah, man. You know, the whole thing of uh, what is this? They, were they steal us? us? They steal from us. Well, if you look at uh, I'm trying to think. If you look at Southwest Airlines logo, okay, you'll see uh, wings. All that was stolen. All right, the stories, the concepts about salvation came from our our African ancestors. The the concepts about death and judgment and resurrection and heaven and eternal life and and creation and everything we were taught in church, everything, man, was stolen and copied from us. It's so important you understand that, brothers and sisters, okay? It's so important you understand that. So it's important to, to know that, you know, the, this whole thing of Genesis, one and one, okay? You know, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth, right? Okay. Well, that goes without saying. I mean, you know, that you don't, you don't, you don't know that because Genesis one and one says that. Common sense tells you that. In the beginning, everything has to have a beginning, right? Okay, so the universe that we now see, when you look outside, you know, and, and you see the clouds in the sky, you see the you see the trees, you see the earth, you know, all of that had to have a beginning, and it all began with a thought. Okay, 
it all was it all began on the foundation of my art as it states in the Hussia. Yes. It, and as, as the Hussia clearly says, it says, uh, how, how to say, um, okay, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, when it comes to Moses, they stole that story, right? Told you this guy named Moses existed who led some so-called Hebrews out of Egypt. Brothers and sisters, that never happened. Never happened. 